Um, okay. So we're gonna go through the first part of S4 today, chapter 15. And for the short introduction, uh, it's similar to S3, but it has a stricter implementation and it has some specialized functions that we will uh, get through in the basics and classes, I think. Um, it also has multiple inheritance and multiple dispatch, which we will get to next week. And it has a special component, which is the slot. And this is accessed using the subsetting operator at. So to the basics, um, to define an S4 class, you uh, use the set class command and you need the name of the class. In this case, it's person and you need to define the slots and give each slot a name plus um, say which class uh, of cl like, yeah, which class this data will be. So here um, you have slots and then you have the name, which is name and age and the, the classes here are character and numeric. To construct then a new as for um, object of this class, you can use new. In this case, it would be new and then the name of the class, which is person. And then you give the name of the slots with the corresponding um, input that you want to have here. And um, you can check then uh, if an object is, or which class this S4, of S4 object has with is. So is Bob here is a person and you can access the slots with this add operator. So Bob at name would be the name Bob Marley. And uh, you can also do that with slot, uh, with the slot function. So slot Bob, and then you can access age, for example, um, which we didn't define, so it's an A. But uh, it's recommended to either just use the add or um, use the accessor functions. So usually if you um, have S4 objects or S4 class objects, you will also have certain accessor functions to access uh, specific slots. And also it should be kept in mind if you create um, these kinds of ob objects that you should provide accessor functions. And to create these accessors, you first have to set a generic. Um, so you can set a generic to, um, to get the age slot, for example, and then a generic to set the age um, slot. And then with define, uh, no, with set method, you can define the method how this will work. So set method for age um, for the class person is um, the function of x where you just have x at h. So you access this slot h. And um, the same thing will be for the setter where you have the function of x and the value and you say the slot x should, uh, the slot age of X will then be the certain value. And you can use it uh, like this. You then just have age of Bob is 36 and you can get again the age of Bob then um, and it will give you 36. Um, you can also again use loop to find out what object type we have here and you will see it is S4. And if you use that for the function age, it will tell you again, it's S4 and then it's a generic function. So I have a question if we have, and I guess I could have looked this up to myself. Um, so let's say we make a new S4 class, but we want to have it have like a, a method that's like really complicated, like that's going to take more than one line to do a definition. Can we write like a long function and then set the method with set method rather than doing like here it's an anonymous function, right? So set method age person function x at, at age. Like what if we had a super complicated function like, you know, determine Bob Marley's goodness of music, whatever. And that'd be a super long function with a lot of stuff. Would we be able to just write that little function and then set it with set method? Or is um, set method only for the accessors and the, the like setters and getters? No, I think it's for for all the um, methods that you can use with this class of objects. So um, I'm not sure if it was already in this part of the chapter, but I know from working with some S4 objects that there's also, also like other methods that will be used in the same way. 
and yeah. that I, I didn't check the, the source code of the, those methods, but I assume that they are then a bit more complicated, but um, you will then also have a function and then just the, the S4 object as the, um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, as the argument. So I think you can use, you can, you can do any method with that. So we could say set method um, like age person and then just give a function call like if we had defined mm -hmm. a very complicated function somewhere. I think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Theoretically, it should also be possible with other generics, right? Because you first say this will yeah. be now a generic method and then you use it to set the certain method for this class um, and this this function. So theoretically, set method should work also with other generics, right? So that you use, for example, set method print person and then give the function how it should be printed. Um, but I'm also not 100% sure. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had tested this before. I'm having like a hard time thinking of a test on the. Mm. Um, do you have any thoughts, Megan, on that? <laughs> okay, no, I think particularly. <laughs> we can. I I don't know. We can either. Did anybody read the rest of the chapter already? Mm -hmm. I can either see if it maybe pops up next week um, and otherwise ask in the channel. Okay. <laughs> then we have the first exercises. Um, so the first exercise was Lubridate period returns an S4 class. Um, what slots does it have? What class in each slot and what accessors does it provide? So, um, I just uh, created like um, an empty one as example here. And um, uh, actually for like, for what slots does it have? I went to the help um, and it tells you these are the, the six slots that it has and it, they are all numeric objects. Um, and uh, what else did I do here? <laughs> so is example is actually, so the class is period, and then it also has time span, numeric, and vector. I guess this comes later with the inheritance also, what this means. Um, when you use get class, you also get the, the names of the slots. Um, oh, and that's then, what I was going to ask, if there was like a function for that, because I just did the thing where you go, in our studio tab and then at and then look yeah. at them all. Which I was like, that's tedious. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Yeah, I, I also did that in the beginning. Um, but yeah, you can use get class and it will tell you, uh, so it, because you know, here it's a class period. And then when you use get class for this class, it will tell you these are the slots of the class and it extends to um, class time span numeric and, and vector. And then it has accessor functions basically for all of the slots except for the um, dot data. But I think in the help file it says dot data is basically um, second. Yeah. Ah, because second is not a slot. And I think in dot data actually you have the second. So um, the accessor for dot data is second. Yeah. <laughs> I think there were. There were also maybe like they've got like maybe like time zone and stuff like TZ. When I looked at something in the help, it talked about is it in the is is the TZ slot in time span? Maybe maybe in the time span class. Mm, mm. Yeah, it could be maybe because I I think period is just. So this, this class is just somehow, um, yeah, it, it is difficult 
depending on uh so it yeah <laughs> it's not super well defined i think because it depends on on like the time zones and then also like a month can have a different number of days and um mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so i just checked with git class so so time span is extending the interval class and interval has a time zone has it's easy so it's interval uh, time span and then period sounds like right. <laughs> cool okay <laughs> good then the next um exercise is what other ways can you find help for a method read question mark uh question mark and summarize the details. So um, yeah, I actually, I just took the example from that help site because it, it tells quite easily um, what, what options there are. Um, in this case, uh, as for generic function and some methods are generated. So combo um, is uh, generic and then, um, yeah, it's also a method. And you can find either the help with the question mark and then the name of the function. But you can also use methods question mark function, which uh, looks for the overall methods documentation. So this is just a function documentation. And then you will also can you can also get the methods documentation. And then um, actually this one I didn't really get. So if you have method question mark combo and then numeric numeric I think because here it is um, you have to give two numerics to the function um, but it also says you get then the documentation for the method above I don't really see the difference um, and you can also say question mark combo and then give actually uh, um, arguments to the function and uh, it will give you then help for the method selected selected according to the arguments um, yeah so I guess this is because it's again a generic and it depends the method will depend on what arguments you give it to uh, give to the method and then you might have different help files for that any other thoughts on that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then we will go on. <laughs> um, yeah, so then uh -huh. there was just two. Okay, um, the next part is about classes. And to define an S4 class, you can uh, call set class with three arguments. So um, that was already basically, or in part what we had before, you would give a name to the class. Usually you use a camel case. And then you give the name character vector for the slots with the classes of the slots. And you can also give a prototype. And this is then a list of default values for each slot. So you can, again, make a person class and then uh, use new to create a new object um, of the class person. And in this case, I used my name, Anna. And you can see the, the structure of this object with um, structure me. So you see here it's a class person with two slots, uh, name and age, where you have name and age should be in numeric, but it's um, empty. And then we have also inheritance. So you can create new classes that contain um, basically uh, another S4 class. Um, and you use contains, the argument contains when you set the class. Um, in this case, you can basically set another class, for example, employee, which contains the class person. And then another slot, um, which is the boss of that person. And boss is again, um, an object of class person. 
And then you only set the prototype for the new slot boss. And the structure of that one would then be like this. So you have the new slot boss and boss has again the two slots of the person um, class. And additionally, you also have the person which is contained in here. And in, yeah, this is introspection. So to check inheritance of object, you can use again is. So is of person is just person and is of employee would be employee and person. So I think this is what we also saw before already. You have here the, the class and it also contains a person. And you can also check specifically if me is a person, which is true. <laughs> um, yep. Then a point that he says can yeah, lead to some confusion or uh, problems is the redefinition. So you can set a class, uh, give it here. So you can set here, for example, class A, give it a slot that is numeric and create an object, um, small a. And then you can set, use set class again and basically redefine um, capital A and give it a different slot, which is uh, also numeric. And when you call A, then it will tell you um, it is an object of class A, but it, there is an error because there's no slot of the name, a different slot for this object, because we defined it before without a different slot. And now the, the class of it changed. So uh, it somehow doesn't cope very well with that. Um, because it still has the same, this, the, the name, the same class, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have the slots anymore that it should have now. Okay, and uh, yeah, then there are also uh, helper functions that you can create to, um, to make it easier to create, create objects of a certain class. And these helper functions should always have the same name as the class. Um, so you use them like this, my class um, as a function. And you can, yeah, uh, carefully choose default values and useful conversions um, and create error messages and always finish by calling methods new. So it's basically for this really simple person, um, class, it would be something like you, you define now the, the helper function person, which has the arguments name and age, because we have those two slots there. And you could, for example, always convert the age to a double, that it makes, uh, makes it easier. And then call inside of this function, the, the thing that we used before to create a new um, object with new, and say person is the name now, and we have um, name is name and h is h, which are provided in the function. So um, yeah, so then you can use person and just give it basically the name uh, of the slot or the, the input for the slot. And it will create the same object um, of class person with the slot name is Anna and no h. So this is uh, quite simple. Um, in this case, I guess it will be, be more complicated if you have more slots and more complicated things in there. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, probably easier to have the helper um, to create these objects. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we can also have validator functions because uh, the Constructor, uh, the constructor automatically checks if um, the slots have the same, uh, the, the correct class, but this is all that it does. So if I would provide here, um, instead of a character, um, and, uh, uh, double, and instead of uh, age, um, instead of uh, number uh, logical, it will throw an error and tell you that those are invalid, um, invalid objects for the slots. Um, and it will not create the, um, the object. 
but for example you could uh, create an object like this where you have um, my name and then age with which has two numbers and you would have um, yeah this object where I have two ages at the same time um, which is not possible so here you would have uh, to set to create a validator and you can do it with set validity and um, yeah basically in this case you would just create a function to check if the name and age are of the same length and if they are not it will give you an error message and otherwise it will continue and create this object so in this case if i try to create an object like this it will tell you um, no name and age must be of the same length and will not do it but again you can cheat and uh, create a, a fine valid object first and then change the age slot afterwards um, and it will have here Alex and then one to 10 as the age, um, which is not valid, but it is possible to do that. Um, and you can check afterwards if it is a valid object with valid object. And it will tell you actually, no, this is not a valid object, but yeah, you did it anyways. <laughs> Great work. Um, cool. That was already it. And we are um, left with some exercises. So the first exercise to this chapter, um, part of the chapter is extend the person class with fields to match Yuto's person. Um, think about what slots you will need, what class each slot should have, and what you'll need to check on your validity method. So I had a question with the validity. Yeah. Like, it seems like when we have a lot of things to check, like a lot of slots, like, is it just, do we have to super tediously type in bum, 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 bum in one single if statement? Because that seems like outrageous, right? Like, yeah. when I looked it up, I, I started writing it. And then mm -hmm. I was like, because if you look at the util person, there's like a lot of different things to it. So I was like, okay, I'll add given family, email, role, comment, age. And I was like, oh, I have to make all these ifs for a validator method. I don't know how to do that actually. Yeah, um, so, uh, I, uh, I didn't do any validity checks <laughs> here. <laughs> because I thought this is very simple actually, because you only have, um, yeah, you only have, and yeah, the names. So the the character is basically checked already when you when you create a class, the the class of the yeah. slot. And I thought, well, you can have several email addresses or several rows or comments. And I oh, know I did one. Ah. Wait. Yeah, because for the row, oh. it should be one of those. Um, so I said. So I basically put two if statement take statements in here. So first to check that the given and the family name is the same length. And then uh, that the role should be one of those. Oh, so I, I was thinking, which I think now must be a really silly thing to have thought that we had to have like basically everything in one if else statement. Like that was how, how the set validator was working and I was like oh that seems really off but you you have multiple ones so that oh I think you thought it would be but I'm like yeah if, like else if it or yeah like, like we'd have yeah I thought we would have to do that and I was like oh that sounds like it's gonna be like but annoying it makes more sense I think because now I have here yeah not sure if this is the best thing <laughs> to be honest yeah or so maybe, maybe like it, it makes sense to have if as if as if as if and then in the end if everything checks out fine to have true mm. yeah it sounds tedious yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah i guess it's what you should do <laughs> Does your does your function class work? Like, if you tried to make an invalid person, does it work? Yeah. Oh. So if I have here yeah. Uh, yeah. only mm -hmm. this one, 
then it gives me this is missing with no default. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, but this is basically because I, uh, I know, yeah, because I didn't put it in there. And mm -hmm. I guess I said that given and family must be the same thing. Or is it because here in the function, I, you know, I think this one is because I didn't put it in the function as a default. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then um, can I work in here? Yeah. So you mean if I have um, person, uh, and then uh, the role is something, and then I have to run everything right. Yeah. Well. No. Uh, oh, it's still thirty six. Is mad at you. Yeah, invalid class. Oh, yep. mm. Yeah. Cool. So that cool. works. Okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, the second, or do you still have anything for that one? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, the second exercise is what happens if you define a new S4 class that doesn't have any slots? Um, hint read about virtual classes. So um, it looks like a lot, but I didn't, yeah, I just read basically in, in this uh, help file. And there's some things about the virtual classes. So if the class is virtual, an attempt to generate an object from either the generator or new will result in an error. So you cannot actually generate it. Um, okay. But these classes exist um, with no actual objects, um, can be created, and yeah, those are the virtual classes. Um, and mm, da -dum, da -dum, this is a lot of text, <laughs> but I, I read that it's a, yeah helpful if you have unions or also something like um, classes that then are contained in different subclasses. Um, so you can create them also easily with um, set class and set representation to virtual and then we'll tell you yeah we have a virtual class A here um, no slots uh, prototype of class S4 and I found an example for one um, which is also actually a virtual class um, it's a genomic ranges it has some oh. slots um, and it extends to several other classes. So I guess this is basically a framework or something like that. And you can then use it with, in this case, several other classes um, that then contain this framework, but have slots that can be uh, filled and used. So uh -huh. at least that's how, how I understood it. So, yep. <laughs> oh. That's cool. I guess it kind of makes sense. So I made a little one which basically was like, I mean, it's such a tiny extra ex example, but basically I said I made a class which was animal, and then you can make a class human which contains animal, and human can have no slots and you can generate a new human without mm -hmm. errors but it's the same idea that like you want to use the the classes that are the parent classes but you don't want to set up anything for that one is the idea behind virtual i think so Thanks. yeah so you can yeah. basically unite several classes under one uh yeah uh, one meta class so yeah. Then, yeah yeah okay that makes sense i think yeah <laughs> Cool. Okay, question number three. Um, imagine you were going to re-implement factor states and data frames in S4. Sketch out the set class calls that you would use to define the, the classes. Think about appropriate slots and prototype. To be honest, I just did the, um, the factors here because I was lazy <laughs> in case anybody else wants to share something here. <laughs> Um, and I, I just did a very rudimentary one. So um, 
this would be the new factor and it has the slots um, x which is a character and levels which would be integer and um, yeah, then you have X, which is uh, the prototype would be an, an, an A character and the levels would be basically this, yeah, the seek along X, so the numbers in this one. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any, any, did you do any more? Any of the others or any, like a different kind of new factor? I also just made a factor, um, but my factor didn't work. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I'll, 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 oh no! I can't! I can't screen share. Okay. Do you want to share the screen? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll show real quick, Don't and maybe you can tell me why it didn't work. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Um. Cool. So I made my my factor here. I called it my S four factor. Um. And then I tried to make a validity function would check that the length of values equals the length of levels. And so levels should be character, integer, and then order would be logical. Um, and then I gave it a prototype, characters, integer, false. And then for some reason, this works totally fine now that I'm doing this right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and if I try to break it, <laughs> not no. Okay, set validity x plus factor. You should, you should give me an error now. Aha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aha. Okay, there it's broken again. Okay. So my validity function isn't working in the way that I expect it to. Huh. Is what I'm confused by. So I create a new x four factor. And I say values is letters one to two, which should be two things. Mm -hmm. Levels should be two numbers, okay? And like for sanity, that equals two. That equals two. Um, so it your, work, right? in your validity, yep. you've got if the values the lengths are the same, it should oh, produce. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> oh, but see, now that shouldn't work. Yeah. So that should be an error. Oh, no, because, oh my gosh. Nobody allow me to make an object. <laughs> But if they are not the same length, it should be true, right? Okay. I don't know. If they're not, yeah, if they are so the what same, is they're not uh, the same length. Else, else it should be true, no? Else, true. Does it, wait, okay. where are the validity? So one of these should oh. fail, one of these should work. Let's, let's see if we can make this happen. Okay. Validity. Okay, the first one should be successful, the second one should be a failure. Okay. <laughs> if the lengths are not equal to another, true. Okay, that should be successful. This should now fail, but it doesn't. Hmm. Why did it not fail? Yeah. Various number of books. Oh. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe I have some weird thing, like a global variable floating around somewhere. Mm. Maybe it doesn't like the name. Uh, maybe you have to put the uh, the name of the. Or wait. So you, maybe you have to put object at values and object at levels. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise okay. it's not accessed. Maybe mm, interesting. So yeah. in, the, in the book, it's written like that. So. 
Yes. Woo! Oh, cool. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yeah, because otherwise we did it. it, really we did it. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> cool. Great. Yeah, that's uh, that's it already. So it was actually not so much the two first mm. part. Okay. What do you, what do you guys think about in the? I think it was in the introduction. Probably it was in the introduction. Um, he mentioned that, like, there's not there's not like a one good source of good reference source for S4 and that being mm -hmm. like a source of frustration and stuff. And I was thinking that's quite, well, obviously it's quite frustrating, but like S4 from, from what I'm reading so far, it seems like it's kind of like potentially a good balance between the, uh, slightly slightly more robust slash strictness of r6 but the more r ness of s3 maybe mm. so if that's the case and maybe that's not but if that is the case that it's kind of trying to give the best of both worlds of those things then it's a shame that it's not more doesn't have a more kind of like uh, there's not there's not a better reference resource for it. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. I wonder if it's because, as he says, so at least I mean I work with S4 objects every day pretty much because I oh, use yeah. a lot of bio yeah because I use a lot of bioconductor yeah. packages, and basically yeah. everything on bioconductor has been written in S4, probably mm. because of what you just said that it is mm. a good balance between ariness and like having some safety built in. Yeah, and I wonder if it just it's it's because the developers who are writing it all the most probably tend to be biologists who are mm. more interested in doing biological things in general. Mm. That could be mm. just why there's just not as good documentation for it. Yeah, I, I checked out the one uh, bioconductor um, that he also suggested that you can ch check out in the resources of bioconductor and there are some files um, written by, I forgot the name, but um, that looks like a bit more detailed um, information, mm -hmm. well, so um, could also be helpful. Yeah, I feel like my vibe at the moment is that I think I like having things have some level of kind of strictness about them for things yeah. like this. So I'm preferring S4 and R6 to S3. But the, I guess then ultimately it will be like at some point the choice between <laughs> which one. Mm. Obviously, it's something yeah, that's dictated by I, the I like, circumstances. But I like you. I prefer the kind of. Kind of oh, it's slightly frozen, maybe. <laughs> no, oh, okay. Back. Possibly back. You're moving again anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also like S4, but I guess it's because I also basically work every day with S4 objects and it's feeling more natural to me because yeah, I know that and I know how to access the slots. Yay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. So I was thinking next week I could do, it looks like also that S4 generics and methods and method dispatch should be relatively short. Um, we can also do trade-offs next week if you guys want. Yeah. So we can do the end of the end of S4 and then talk about trade-offs. Yeah, because I think it'd be interesting to have that discussion about like having looked at them all, some of these things about how they how you kind of compare them and what the things that you need to consider yeah i'll be up for that yeah sounds good cool all right i'm gonna i'm gonna run then because i'm being yelled at because dinner's ready <laughs> nice <laughs> all right okay see you next week then thank you so much all right